Hi, it's been a while. This is a Virginia bluebells plant. It's native to America. It's one of the first flowers to bloom in spring. I planted it last fall. The very first one to flower was this pulmonaria, also called lungwort. I think this one is raspberry splash. I'm happy to report the critters left these alone. It's been kind of a crazy year. This is a parking lot by us after Hurricane Ida hit. Then we kept getting pounded with rain. I've never seen so much rain. These little frogs seem to like it. Unfortunately, so did the mosquitoes. I've never seen so many mosquitoes either. In fact, our town had to spray for the mosquitoes. So much has been going on this year, including taking down this tree. Before I went to work, I set up my camera to record it. It took about six hours and I condensed it to one minute. called silver maple. The little twisted tree in front was a dying dogwood tree. I made a lot of changes to the garden this year. For example, in spring, I really liked those bright yellow and red colors together. However, when the hot summer rolled around, I changed my mind. So I removed those bright yellow plants. Another project was putting up this arbor. First I had new dawn rose on the left hand side here, but I changed my mind and planted summer romance rose instead. I'm just hoping it gets enough sun here. Also this year I discovered David Austin roses. This one is called Gertrude Jekyll. It has such an amazing fragrance. It has such sweet flowers too. With partial sun, it only flowered once for me, but look how vigorous it is. All this growth is from spring and very healthy. I'm using garden clips to start out with to train them up to the front door. These are the clips I'm using to hold climbing roses. Personally, I find the smaller size useless. This is the biggest project I've been working on. I've been spending a lot of time digging this trench for a drainage system to carry water away from the gardens. Our clay soil is really poorly draining. It's easy to guide the water down because there's a slope here, but back there it's level, and that's where all the water sits on the surface for many weeks after a rain. When I first started digging, I didn't realize what a big project I had started. I did all of this with a trenching shovel. However, around this point, I realized I needed my husband's help. There's my muddy trenching shovel. There's my poor green giant. I just want to back up for a second to show you another thing I did this year. I had these red knockout roses here. But I decided I wanted pink instead. So I took these red roses out and I put the pink knockouts here instead.
I also added this butterfly Japanese maple. I think this might be my favorite tree. I removed the yellow evergreen behind it and replaced it with a greener one. I just thought it was hard to see the detail of the butterfly Japanese maple with that yellow evergreen in the background. Here's the pine I planted. It's an Austrian pine called Oregon Green. It's probably not the best choice, but we'll see how it does. The butterfly maple is not looking its best right now because it had a challenging beginning. After some flooding issues, I used our clay soil to create a barrier. I'm hoping this directs water to the left and right away from the tree. I planted some thyme here to give it a bonsai, low-growing grass type of look. There's also some cat mint and some phlox here too. This is Twombly's Red Sentinel Japanese Maple. I decided I don't really like this maroon burgundy type of color. Especially on cloudy days, it just seems so dreary to me. I really like the spring color, it just doesn't last that long. A red Japanese maple I like much more is this little one on the left hand side. It's called Celebration. The color lasted much longer and always looked bright. I really like the texture of the leaves. There's a lot going on with this. Around midsummer, it changed color again and surprised me with a nice soft orange color. This is what it looked like at the end of August. Here it is again in November. It looks very blotchy. This might be a sign of powdery mildew. I'm not sure. After a while, I just couldn't dig the trench anymore and my husband did a great job of speeding things along. Another thing I did was transplant these hydrangeas out of here. I think I just prefer something that flowers more frequently. For example, I was really happy with this Belinda's Dream Rose. It was such a tiny plant, but it grew so fast and produced so many beautiful flowers. Look how tiny it was back on May 30th of this year. Now, this is how it looked October 30th, same year. It came as a one gallon from shamblesroses.com. It's growing in zone six with morning sun and gets about a total of six hours of sun. This one on the corner is Olivia Austin Rose. Beautiful rose, but Belinda flowered so much more and all from a tiny little plant. I'm going to make a whole video about roses because there's so much to talk about. Yet another thing I added to the garden was this gazebo. My husband was recovering from COVID and he still managed to put this together faster than I could ever have. The first thing I did was prepare the soil, not just for the gazebo, but for the climbing roses I plan to have grow on it. I'm planting salvias and agastache to attract hummingbirds. Agastache has a, some people describe it as a root beer smell, very pleasant, sweet smell by the gazebo opening. So when you brush past it, you can smell that pleasant smell. That pile is our heavy concrete-like soil. So I added lots of compost, leaf compost, mushroom compost, lots of perlite to help give space for the roots and to help with drainage.
In a recent video I showed I put the edging in here. I accidentally did a little damage to it already by digging too close to it. I was preparing a space for another David Austin rose coming in spring. Anyway, this gives you an idea of how heavy our clay soil is. It's very compacted. It gets muddy fast, too. This year I worked on this little spot as well, just making it a little bit bigger and putting some more plants, some hummingbird plants. You can kind of see how the ground goes up and down. It's not a flat plot of land. Here's what things look like now in November. I plan to add some stones around the gazebo area and on the inside. I'm probably going to just create some cement slabs to look like stones and I'll do a follow-up video on that too. Here's a quick look at a few roses I planted there. I noticed the deer wasted no time, or some critter wasted no time in chewing on them, so I decided to protect them until they start to leaf out in summer. These are all potted roses I planted this fall to get a head start. I do have an order with David Austin for spring. It's probably better to wait until spring if you can. You'll get bigger roses bare root, at least from David Austin. I placed an order for spring as well. So far my plan is to put a Boscobel rose here, Ancient Mariner there, and another Ancient Mariner next to Belinda's dream here. That's the plan anyway. I really like this color combination of sweet drift rose and pink delight butterfly bush. After starting to grow roses, I quickly learned about Japanese beetles. They have the potential to do a lot of damage to your roses. A great non-toxic way of dealing with them is carrying a soapy bucket of water and just flicking them into it whenever you're walking around the garden and you see them. Another pest that I learned about this year is the spotted lanternfly. It's an invasive species doing lots of damage to various plants. They're hard to see. Sometimes they're camouflaged at the trunk of a tree. If you see them, please squash them. Even though it's already fall, I decided to set up this raised garden bed for dinosaur kale. Unfortunately, the critters got to it before I could put a proper fence up. It's cold hardy to zone 7. We're in zone 6, so I'll probably have to put a cold frame on top at some point. By the way, I read that if you grow kale in cooler temperatures, the taste will be sweeter. Speaking of fall, I wanted to quickly show you this native plant called spotted jewel weed. On multiple occasions, I've seen a hummingbird feed from the nectar of this plant. When the seed pods form in fall, they do something kind of interesting. I saw this at the local garden center. I never saw one before. It's a live cotton plant. Fall is arguably the best time to plant. It's not as hot, there aren't as many mosquitoes, you don't have to water as much, and look at all these sales. So that's a summary of what's been going on this past summer here. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but it's a process, right? If you have any suggestions about gardening, especially garden design, I'd really appreciate it if you shared it in the comments. Well, thanks for having a seat with me for a little while. Check out those firepower Nandinas. They're looking so good. And it's not even winter yet. Okay, 
to be continued.